All right, everyone. So in this lecture, you're going to learn that how you can blur an image and we are going to even create a toggle so you can toggle between the normal image, the original image and the blurred image. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see that right now our code is the minimum amount of code and this is a code that you have been seeing again and again. We have the app widget, we have the build function and it simply sets up the scaffolding app bar and body simply text which displays nothing. Now the first thing that we want to do is obviously to display an image. So let me go ahead and create a brand new folder and let's call it images. Now currently this folder is inside lib. I'm just going to move it out so that this folder is at the same location and the same level as a lib folder. So it's not inside the lib folder. It's right next to the lib folder. All right, you can see. Now currently we don't really have any images, so I'm just going to drag one image and there we go, a beautiful cat image. Now our next step would be to display this beautiful cat image into our application. Now before we do that, since this image is actually on our machine, on our hard drive within our folder, we need to specify something called assets. So if you open up your pubspec.yaml file and scroll down to line number 43, you're going to find out assets. So let's go ahead and add that assets tag. There we go. Now currently we don't really have any assets. So I'm just going to go ahead and add an asset. So it will be images because we have the images folder slash the name of the file, which is cat.png. Great. This means that now inside my application, inside my widget, I can reference, I can refer to these assets that we have added into pubspec.yaml file. All right. Now let's go back to our main and let's see if we can even display this particular image of a cat. So instead of the text widget, we're going to use the image widget. So image dot asset. And now you can provide the URL of the assets, which in this case is images slash cat dot PNG and go ahead and save it. And there we go. You can actually see the cat image is being displayed. Brilliant. Now in order to blur this cat image, we will have to make use of something called a backdrop filter. The backdrop filter is responsible for filtering, blurring. I mean, you can have any image filter that you want to apply and it will filter all the child elements of where it is contained. So right now you can see we want to add it at the same level as the image, but the image is not really inside any child. So if I right click on it and say refactor, maybe I can put this image inside some other widget. So I'm going to say wrap with a new widget and I'm going to go ahead and say stack. So actually hold on. Not sure why it didn't really work. So let's go ahead and refactor it. Let's go ahead and go back first. Okay, there we go. And refactor it. And you can say center widget, column widget, row widget. So it doesn't really have any uh, widget which is called a stack. So I'm just going to put it inside a column and change the column to a stack. All right. Now, if you try to add this into a column, uh, the image is still going to get displayed, but the backdrop filter is not really going to work because the column goes vertically to infinite and it's very hard to control that where do you want the image filter to be applied. So that's why we're going to use a stack. Now the stack can have multiple elements. The first element is the image element, as you can see. The second element is the more interesting one, which is the backdrop filter widget. Now backdrop filter widget contains two different things. What kind of a filter you want to apply? So in this case, we're going to say image filter that we are applying dot blur. So this is a blur filter that we are applying and the blur on the X axis that we are doing going to do will be, let's just say five and on the Y axis will be it will be five also, but you can obviously change it to whatever you want. 
The other part will be the child that we're going to provide. Now, this child is the container we're going to provide, and this is the actual color and the filter that you're going to be applying to. So we're going to say colors dot black dot with opacity. And then we're going to just say zero. So you can actually see through it. And there we go. You can already see that the filter, the backdrop filter is taking, uh, is working and it is applying. So what it did is that it added a child, which is a container and it gave it the uh, opacity of zero. If I go ahead and say opacity of one, then you can see that everything turns into black. So that's why we're saying opacity of zero so that we can see the background filter being applied. So you can see that now the background filter is actually being applied on the cat and the cat is all blurred out. But as I said earlier on that we, what we want to do is also add some sort of a toggle switch. And the responsibility of the toggle switch will be that we'll be able to see that, to turn it on the blur and turn off the blur. So let's go to the backdrop filter when it ends. And we're going to go ahead and add some sort of a switch element. Switch on change is going to fire some sort of a function. And actually, let's go ahead and say value. Initially, it will be false. And now you can see the switch. It's on the top left-hand corner. And the reason it is on the top left-hand corner is that because the switch is actually uh, inside a stack and not a column. So it is just on top of the backdrop filter or on top of the image. Now I can obviously go ahead and right click on the switch, refactor, and put it inside a center widget. Now if I do that, now you can see that the switch is now inside uh, or at the middle of the screen, at the center of the screen. Now the problem is that we have to toggle between two different states. One state is when the toggle is on and the other state is when the toggle is off. But we are using something called a stateless widget, which means that we can't really do that. Uh, we have to use stateful widgets. Now, as you have learned earlier on in the counter example, that in order to do a stateful widget, you have to create a separate class that will maintain the state. So this is a new class called app state. It can be anything, but we're just calling it app state. And it is going to maintain the state for the app widget. The only requirement of the app state class is that it will implement the function, which is the build function. Now we will go ahead and copy all of this build function from the app widget to the app state widget. All right. Now in this case, the app widget is empty now but it's also going to be a state full widget and not a state list widget. The only requirement of a state full widget is that you override a function which is called the create state and create state and then call whoever is responsible for this state. All right. So this is the only requirement that you have. So now we should be able to hopefully maintain the state. Let's go ahead and refresh it. All right. Now, when you look at the code over here in your app state, when we switch, this particular function on change is getting fired, but we don't really do anything inside on change. So what we want to do is we want to say, is blurred true or false? So first we have to create some sort of a variable over here and we can say boolean is, is blurred, which will be initially false. The underscore over here is indicating that this is a private variable. And now we can go over here and call set state and inside set state, we can say is blurred equals to value. Now this value is obviously coming from the switch. It can be either true or false, depending on if you're switching between true or false or you're toggling between those two states. So that's why we are calling that. Now, one other thing to note, 
is that we are setting the is blurred under set state closure. And the reason that we're doing that is that once you call is blurred inside set state, it's going to trigger a refresh, meaning the build function is going to fire again. Another thing that we will do is on line number 36, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to is blurred. There we go. And now finally, when you switch, when you toggle between the on and off state, you set the state and is blurred is fired. It assigns a value, whether it is true or false, and it sets the is blurred property. Since this is inside the set state, it's going to fire the build function again. And at that time, we can actually make sure that if is blurred, then we will go ahead and send five, else we will send zero. And the same thing will happen over here. If I say is blurred, then we are going to go ahead and send five or else zero or any other value rather than five. All right, now let's go ahead and check it out. Perfect. So you can see when the toggle switch is on, it is blurred. When it is off, it is not blurred. So we are going through two different state, whether the cat or the image is actually blurred versus whether it is not blurred, depending on the state of the switch control. All right, so there you have it. We have just created a very simple example of state and also we learn about the backdrop filter, which allows you to perform the image filter operation, whether it's blurred, whether it's some other image operation on a particular layer on basically the parent and all the controls inside that parent will be blurred or inside that particular area will be blurred. So there you have it. This video that you have just seen is part of my upcoming course on Flutter, which will have a lot of example apps. It will have 65 plus example apps. It will be coming in the future, but uh, if you want to support my channel, then check out my Udemy courses. I have Udemy courses on Swift UI, on RxSwift, on Combined Framework, Data Structures, Node Applications, anything that you want to learn in iOS development and even in web development, blockchain programming, I have a lot of different courses. Now, the best way to get those courses is by using a link in the YouTube description. So the referral code is already inside those links. So please go ahead and use those links if you are interested in any of my courses. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, let me know.